Hello again, and welcome. Michael Pozzola here. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Value Capping Rant. This is the 2019 Santa Anita Derby, Wood Memorial, and Bluegrass Stakes edition. These races will be run on Saturday, April 6th, 2019. The Santa Anita Derby is the 8th at Santa Anita. The Wood Memorial uh, is the 10th at Aqueduct, and the Bluegrass Stakes the 10th at Keeneland. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Pizzola. I am the author of the best-selling uh, handicapping book, Handicapping Magic, co-author of Pace Makes the Race. I'm the creator of the original online racing form in its current iteration, Post Time Daily 2.0. You can find that at posttimedaily.com. It's a fully customizable past performance. I am the designer and creator of the Black Magic. Uh, family of handicapping software. The latest version of that is Value Capper, um, Black Magic Handicapper 2.0. If you want to learn more about the principles of value capping, please go to valuecapper.com. I've done a uh, really helpful for video free video course called the Value Capping Revolution Basic Training Course. Can't recommend it highly enough. Talk about the value capping framework. Why value capping and looking for value bets is different than handicapping. Who's going to win the race kind of approach. We talk about the five by five formula and the software and the training, but I don't really, I'm not that concerned uh, about you getting involved with the software or training. Honestly, I really would like you to consider the principles of value capping, which are all presented in the first three videos. Okay, the five bar version. Value capping is about betting horses you like that the public shouldn't, preferably running against vulnerable favorites. You wait for your price, you let the bet make you. That's value capping in a nutshell. It doesn't say find the best horse and bet it no matter what the price is, okay? Now, before we get into the races, a few important points. Number one, this is not a touting video. I've been in this business for decades. Never touted my selections, sold my selections, done any of that. Doesn't do any, I don't think it's very helpful. Uh, you know, I bet my selections, that's what I do, okay? And, uh, you, you know, if I quote unquote pick a horse for you and, and then uh, you lose and you're not happy or you win the bet and it's like, well, what about the next one? And so forth. That That's not very helpful for me. I make these videos to demonstrate the principles of value capping. I don't know what's going to happen in, in a race. There are so many variables. I do know that I've got a good odds line based on really good numbers that are all built into my software. And I make a set of probabilities out of it. Not certainties, but probabilities. And then I wait for an overlay. And what, cre what constitutes an overlay? Yes, of course, it's a higher price than the line that you make. But there's a lot more to that. And I'll show you some of that as this video goes along. Um, I'm making this uh, video on Thursday, August the, f uh, excuse me, April the 4th, which is a couple of days before the race. I don't know what the weather's going to be like. I don't know what the scratches and so forth. So uh, it's a little ahead of myself. Um, the third point, software is a tool. I can't tell you how many, and thank you, uh, nice comments I got about Value Capper software in the last video I just did on the Florida Derby, which had the Florida Derby won too. Um, but... Remember, software is a tool. It's a tool to be used. Just like if I give, um, you know, a paintbrush to a really talented artist or a golf club to a champion golfer, they're going to be able to use that paintbrush or that golf club much better than a person who's never painted before or is just a beginning painter or, a, you know, a, a club golfer who's, you know, pretty good but not that good. It's going to be very different results. So it's a tool to be used to point you to, val in my opinion, to value bets. And speaking of value bets, value bets or value investment potentials are price dependent. That means no adequate price, no bet. And there was a situation like this back in the Florida Derby um, uh, video that I made for you just uh, last week. Uh, and, and look, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I know Maximum Security ran away and won the race and surprisingly... Boat Express went off at 70 to 1 and finished second. And that triggered a $514 um, ex uh, exacta. Where was the win price? 
in my mind, it was on Boat Express. Did I, quote unquote, expect him to win? Well, I thought he had a shot, but no, he was second on my line. But the price was just so overwhelming. Did I make money in the race? Yeah, I did. This was my markup of the race from last week. The eight was the VIP. He went off at the price. The other horses weren't prices. Unfortunately, the price on maximum security didn't develop. Um, maximum security paid eleven sixty. I thought that was not quite enough, but it kind of made up from a $47 place price on uh, Bodie Express who was almost 72 to one, and the exacta came back $514 for two, the 50 cent trifecta, $552. Uh, each of these little exacta boxes, $5 exacta box, these are the tickets I'm gonna show you, okay? Uh, for some people, this is a significant bet. For other people, it's like, are you kidding me? That's all? Well, no, that's not all, but this is what I'm gonna show you. That little $5 exacta bet, came back $1,285. I'm almost as proud as the undercard race that I showed you. And I only showed one undercard race. And that was the first race at Gulfstream. It was a mess. It was an ugly maiden race. Yes, I mentioned two horses, the nine immunity and the 10 liquid aloha. I waited for the price. One went off at 23 to one. One went off at 95 to one. What did I do? I bet them both. I had them hooked up in exactas in various ways. Well, Liquid Aloha paid 48.60. And so I bet them both. And uh, here's one of the win tickets. A uh, $15 win ticket on uh, Liquid Aloha came back $364.50. I don't show you this to brag, but I show this to you to uh, indicate that in value capping, it doesn't matter. Having a lot of winners at low prices um, is nice. But in my opinion, given the randomness of the game, given how good the public has become in, in finding good horses because of the distribution of good information all over the Internet and online services like my online past performance and, you know, my software and other people, they're all, you know, um, Equibase's, you know, is superb numbers and so forth. Uh the game has gotten t the public has gotten smarter and therefore the game has gotten tougher and that's why price is so important with that all having been said let's get into saturday april 6 kentucky derby preps the first one is the bluegrass stakes it's the 10th race at keeneland on saturday april 6 2019 um here's the way value capper looks at the race not very surprisingly, Win 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 and Vekoma are on top, tied on top of the line. There's a gap down to some like it, Hot Brown, um, and then another gap down to eh, some of the other horses. Now, uh, forgive me if I say horse instead of colt sometimes. It's just a habit. They're, I think of them all as wonderful, beautiful horses. These are colts, obviously. A um, couple of things of note. There's a gap after Win 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 and Vekoma. I don't uh, get very interested in races with a big arc, meaning horses above random, too many horses with a shot. Uh, in this case, there are two horses that stand above the field, one other horse that stands above the alsos. And uh, so I'll look at it. I'm, I'm not excited uh, when there are that many horses in the arc. I'm also not excited when uh, the horses that value capper uh, puts on top of the line after giving so many benefits of the doubt and, and looking for running lines in a contrarian way and making numbers that no one else has and so forth that are, you know, stood the, in my opinion, stood the test of time. Doing all of that, we agree with the public. It's like, okay, enough. Why, uh, you know, what are we looking at? I do notice that on a positional point of view, this is kind of a neutral race, uh, kind of a early or a late horse can win. On a number side, it could be highly pressured. So let's look a little more carefully. The nine furlong, uh, mile and an eighth for us old timers, uh, track profile is running on the late side at uh, Keeneland. Now, they don't run this distance too often. So I have to go back. I have some races here from 2017. The last two bluegrass stakes, they 
kind of ran with the you know the champions uh, expenditure in the mid fifty ones, mid to low fifty ones. That's a um, that's a horse that comes slightly off the pace, a, a true presser, if you will. However, the last few races have gone to a later running uh, horse. Now, in this race, it comes up as a highly pressured race. That means. There are at look at the second call again from the projection. That's if all the horses decide um, and the jockeys decide to do what they've done before based on. And by the way, this is called acupressure looks at every horse's um, every line and does very sophisticated pace matchups. So Market King looks to have a lead in the first call. And then we see a gaggle of horses, uh, some like it hot brown, Market King, Aquadini, Lucky Lee, win, win, win. And we see win, 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 Parsimony and Chess Chief being able to come off the pace as far as their style. Now, if if there's a horse that's way down that's not fast enough, he may have a closing style and even good late fractions, but he's going to do that to, you know, make a big move to finish sixth. Okay, so you've got to look at it all. Win, win, win. Uh, not much bad to say about this. Uh, this colt, uh, he um, broke its maiden and at first asking, wins non-winners one, finished second at a, a little handicap race at Laurel, wins the Pasco at Tampa Bay Downs, comes off the layoff and makes a big close from seven by 11th place all the way to third by two and a half. Is it the right running style based on that and based on the percentage early? I would say yes. How about Vicoma? Now, Vekoma's interesting. Um, he finished uh, third in the Fountain of Youth. Pretty good showing. That's after winning his maiden at first asking and the Nashua, a grade three race. So pretty good. If I have a knock, it's that he expended his energy a little bit on the early side for uh, for this track. But, yeah, but, you know, this is a fast, good colt. The third colt on the line is Some Like It Hot Brown. It's an interesting uh, horse. I had, to, um, I had to look again at the track profile. It's hard to tell what uh, this horse will do because in its first five lifetime races, it ran all of them on the turf was pretty successful, as in just missing winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf a million dollar race by three quarters of a length. Then it comes back off the layoff from it, uh, its two year old season to win two races going away uh, at Turfway Park, the Patalia and the and the Stakes. Now, uh, admittedly, those are not um, well. The Stakes is a graded race. I don't know. It's it's a, it's a decent grade three. It expended its early energy early in that race. In the second race before that, it ran at about a 51. Put those both together. The, either one of those could be okay in this race. Um, obviously, it has late running ability because of its success on the turf, and that's reflected in low energy expenditure. So I wouldn't quite count that one out. The interesting one to me that is not in the arc is way out of it is Signal Man, only because it also ran in the Fountain of Youth. And if you take the Fountain of Youth away where it had a little trouble, um, its energy expenditure is good for this distance. So what do you do with a race like this? If it were a normal day, I'm passing um, because the the two Colts that make the most sense to me, win, 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 and Vacoma, are not going to be prices. They're the first and second morning line favorites. Um, I might take a look at some like it hot brown at a very long price. Now remember, eight to one on your line. Okay, so value capper. Uh, this that's my line, right? So whatever line you make a horse, I make this eight to one. That means if they run the race nine times, it's going to win once. Okay, eight loses. One win, that's you know, right. That's eight to one out of the out of those nine occurrences. So uh, the ch you're saying that it doesn't have much of a chance. So you're going to need a uh, either not to you know just let this go because the top two horses look good, uh, or say okay, you know what? I know some like it. Hot Brown isn't my uh, first um, first choice, 
Uh, however, if it goes off at 25 to 1, I'll take a little, um, a little bet on it. But uh, this is one where they have got it. I believe they've got it right. And so that's my lookout at the Bluegrass Stakes. Moving to the Wood Memorial. This is an interesting race. Uh, like the Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. The horse player's curse, may, be, may you bet interesting races. But this one's got some texture. Okay, there are six horses, uh, six colts above random. Uh, the favorite's going to be Tacitus. No one surprised. And let's let's look at what the odds line and everything else is telling us. Of the six uh, colts at the top of the line, over deliver has is on top of the line with a gap. And then there's and there are, there are three colts: Final Jeopardy, Outshine, and Haikal. And then there's a gap down to Tacitus and not that Brady. Now. We again have a bit of a discrepancy between the positional projection, which is pressured, and the velocity um, projection, or the primarily velocity, it's kind of an admixture of velocity and position, uh, which comes up unpressured. If that comes out, there is a Colt with an early acupressure advantage, and that's the six over deliver. It is not without its issues, though, because... He's been on a layoff. Let's look a little more closely. As far as the energy expenditure and track profile, it, it it's all kind of all over the place. I would say um, you can close to win with late expenditure, and you can be close up and wire the field. Um, I don't see very many very early expenditures. I think the highest I have in here is 52.82. The rest, again, um, 51 and change. Uh, even you can be very late and come off the pace to win. Again, this was in the past. And again, this is going back. They don't run this mile and an eighth very often at um, at Aqueduct. So, the, But this is what I got. A lot of lates, a sprinkling of uh, mid, um, mid-pack mid uh, horses and the occasional early 52 and change. This race comes up uh, unpressured because of over deliver. It's saying that if over deliver runs one of the races that uh, that he ran and has only had two lifetime races, it could have a very big lead over the field and just coast home. Remember, I told you there was an issue with over deliver, and that is that it's on a layoff. What happens if it doesn't run? Well, I scratched it in my software. So the scenario with over deliver scratched is that now those other horses that would have been in the second tier if over deliver, you know, goes out and opens up a big lead now may provide a, a lot of pressure. And horses like Tacitus have a better shot, as does, again, Final Jeopardy shows up. OK, so so that's the issue to me in this race. Uh, it's kind of an on-off switch. If, if uh, Over Deliver is ready, you can get a big lead, and at a price, I would take him. If it's not, then one of these short closers should be able to do it. Again, Over Deliver's been off since January 19th. It's the target in the race at 158.9, which is the master pace number in uh, value capper. But look at those percentage early um, uh, numbers. It's They're just early for uh for aqueduct also it's had a six furlong race and a seven furlong race now one good thing is that the public will see this as a quitter it says well logically if it quit at seven furlongs and now it's going nine furlongs well it shouldn't do very well and thus the 20 to 1 morning line i believe plus the layoff plus it's never quote unquote beat much it's uh, it's only win was its maiden win um I would need a, I'd need a very long price on this, but there is one scenario, meaning that the race, you know, the source does get on the lead, which it's projected that it can do, and it's ready to run where it's got a shot in the race. Second on my line is Final Jeopardy. You can't get a better expenditure, 5188, 5139, 5148, for this track profile. It's won both on the pace, second by a head in its last race, and... It won its maiden from seven uh, seven lengths back at the second call. So, um, uh, again, the issue, issue, quote-unquote, air quotes issue, is that 
it's only, you know, what is it won? It's won its maiden and it's won its non-winners won. And that brings us to the third colt on the line, Al Shine, who was second in the Tampa uh, Tampa Bay Derby. Um, good numbers, uh, kind of an on-off thing. <laughs> Todd Pletcher's uh, colt here uh, ran a little early in the Tampa Bay uh, Derby, uh, early uh, expenditure, but uh, the fifty-one twenty-six in the second back, fifty-one eighty-six. Those are those are right in line with what the track profile um, indicates. I think based on its second place finish in the Tampa Bay Derby, I think this Colt is going to get bet. And speaking of the Tampa Bay Derby, here's the winner. I think this Colt will be the favorite. Uh, Gee, Michael, how insightful. Really? The five to two morning line favorite? You think it's going to be the favorite, huh? Good. Um, uh, Again, how will this race shape up? Uh, Tacitus has run uh, from both as one, actually. Second race back, it was third by a half a length at the second call. And its win in the Tampa Bay came from seventh, eight lengths back to win it almost nine to one. If I had to say there was a flaw, uh, its percentage running is good, 51-1, 51-4, and so forth. Um, over deliver in its last race ran a 158-9. Tacitus has never run that fast. Now, I don't mind that on an improving Colt at uh, 10 to 1. I do mind that it's a uh, uh, Colt who may be, you know, 8 to 5 uh, in, in a race. I'm not going to take that. So, what to do with a race like this? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, looking for horses I like that the public shouldn't. The horse... One horse I like is over deliver, right? It's on top of my line. Of course, I like it. The public shouldn't because it looks like, you know, uh, it it hasn't beaten much and it's on a layoff. Final Jeopardy and Outshine, they similarly have their uh, little quote unquote flaws and they're the second and third on my line. Uh, my line and over delivers five to one. I'm not going to take anywhere near that because a lot of things have to break right. It's got to be ready after the layoff and it's got to get that clear lead. I think that's about the only way um, uh, this Colt can win. So accordingly, I'd need something like 15 to one, uh, basically because of that layoff. With Final Jeopardy and Outshine, which I both have seven to one on my lines, um, I'm going to need 100% overlay on this on either of those 15 to one I would bet either of those so I'll be watching the board on this and I I think that uh, I you know at at a big price I would take uh, either of these and if it comes like that first race at Gulfstream last week if I have to bet two uh, horses at big prices I would Uh, would I go to three no I probably stay out of the race at that point I wouldn't be surprised if Tacitus and uh, uh, Outshine repeat what they did in the Tampa Bay Derby run run close to each other. Um, I do have some flaws on Tacitus, which is why I'm interesting interested in the race. I think um, the biggest profit making opportunity for me is if I get a long price on over deliver. And again, everything would have to break its way. The most important of which is that this colt will have to be ready to run and break well and get that lead. Uh, in which case, you know, it'll be a good payday. Uh, but I'm not going to overlook Final Jeopardy and Outshine. So that's what I said. It's an interesting race, a race with a lot of texture. Contrast that to the Santa Anita Derby, the uh, race eight at Santa Anita on Saturday, April 6, 2019. Um, there are only f- six uh, Colts in the race, five of them above random on my line. But here's the thing. The top four horses the Colts on my line are the top four morning line uh, favorites. So in other words, again, going through all that contrarian stuff that the software does, it comes up with the same things that the public should, theoretically should, bet. I'm usually not interested in races like that. Looking at the track profile, the last two Santa Anita Derbies, completely uh, opposite. Uh, uh, last year's was run uh, one on the lead wire to wire with a late expenditure. Uh, 2017's was one from off the pace, five lengths back at the first call, three lengths back at the second call, but with an earlier expenditure. 
So if you just look at the beaten lengths of the second call and the big range of early and late, that means that there's no real quote unquote track bias. So uh, any uh, any scenario would work. In this case, AccuPressure puts this as an unpressured race, looking at Instagram to perhaps get the lead in the first call, uh, Nolo Contesto at the second call, and uh, game winner uh, to close into the race. Uh, the target and the top on the line is Nolo Contesto. Morning line makes it 6-1. to one. I don't really see this as um, going off at 6-1. to one. I don't think... It'll be near that price. Uh, this is a late expenditure, early positional uh, Colt. Not much to say bad about it. I mean, it's got three races. It won one. Uh, it won its maiden its second asking. It got second second time out with a little trouble and an allowance. Now, it's a, it's a big ask to ask it to do the Santa Anita Derby. But other than Game Changer, uh, not many, many what I would, uh, proven champions yet. Uh, in this race, hate the name Nolo Contesto, the correct legal term, as um, those of you who, like myself, are recovering uh, lawyers will tell you is Nolo Contendere. Um, anyway, I digress. Second on the line is Instagram. Now, uh, this you could call this one a champion. It's done all the right thing, right? Uh, it broke its maiden at Los Alamitos. It blew away the best pal at Del Mar. Uh, Ran a decent third at the Gotham. Yeah, obvious horse. Maybe a need to lead. I don't know why it didn't. Uh, one could say that it had easy leads in both its maiden win and best pal. And if it doesn't get the lead, it, it's toast. Um, Roadster, again, it, it won its maiden. Went into the Del Mar Futurity as the odds-on favorite, having just won its maiden. But they thought, you know, Bob Babbert knows what he's doing. Apparently he did. He got third place money. Not bad. And then comes in and, you know, it just blows away his uh, uh, non-winners won. That's what I'm saying. This is not, I mean, we're not looking at many what we'd say established champions except for game winner. Now, uh, you know, uh, as a conventional uh, handicapper would think, uh, and, and I would agree, I mean, good Lord. Game winner just blew away its maiden field, blew away the Del Mar Futurity last year, the American Pharaoh, uh, you know, those are both grade ones, and then just happens to win a little race, a, the $2 million Breeders' Cup Juvenile, right? I mean, and that was, those were tremendous uh, performances. And it finished second in the Rebel at Oaklawn. Maybe it was the ship, maybe it was, oh, who knows? Uh, there, there were some points of little trouble. This horse has... Uh, Colt has good numbers. It's got good expenditure. Uh, maybe not as good numbers as uh, some of the other horses that were running in lesser races. This is uh, this is a, a potential real champion. One of the uh, one of the Colts who um, you know one of the early favorites for the uh, Kentucky Derby. Uh, hard to bet against him. Hard hard to bet him. Um, uh, believe it or not, synthesis is above random. Now again, it's on a layoff. The numbers are not strong. Um, it's the fifth on the line. Uh, you know, it's 30 to one on the line and should be. Uh, all those other horses get down and this horse goes off at a, at a really long price, you know, uh, 25 to one. I may make a secondary bet. I would perhaps bet Nolo Contesto at a seven to one range. But honestly, when I agree, with or my line agrees with the public, which I think is what's going to happen in this race. And I, I'm not interested in, in coming back with a $15 exacta. That's not uh, that's not the game I play. I'd rather stay out of that race and keep my powder dry for another uh, decent race. Now, the, the, the hard question is uh, Nolo Contesto goes off at four to one. Instagram goes off at five to two. Roadster goes off at three to one. Game winner goes off at even money. And synthesis goes off at 25 to 1. Well, in that case, I've got no bets on those top four. Um, and whether to bet a real long shot uh, that's got somewhat of a shot is a matter of temperament. If you bet them, you know, if you bet them, you'll have runouts uh, because not a lot of 25 to 1 shots win. Uh, I know we had one, you know, last week uh, in the first race of Gulfstream, that 10 horse. 
but it doesn't happen, you know, day in and day out. I mean, well, it, it does, but not day, every day in and every day out, okay? So th that's a matter of style and temperament. I, I think a more conservative player just passes. Um, I'm going to take a, a kind of a middle approach to this race. I, I think game winner is the quote-unquote best horse, and it's beaten the best horses. Um, I would... If they let me take, if they if they let my top horse Nolo uh, Contesto, I hate saying that. At um, you know maybe seven to one, eight to one, yeah, I'd make a bet on it. If they bet the top four horses properly, uh, so that there's no real good overlays and synthesis is at twenty five to one, I'll take a secondary bet. As I said last week, on big days, good value opportunities often appear in the undercards. I haven't gotten a chance to go through all of the undercards because. There were um, uh, many races. The cards, uh, the final cards were delayed. I wanted to get this video made for you. But I did notice in a very quick pass through the races, an interesting race, uh, the Aqueduct 11th race. Uh, it's just a non-winner's one allowance, typical, uh, typical race. There are five horses above random, two horses uh, with a gap, Arthur's Hope and Dark and Cloudy. Now, you've got to be careful in races where there are many hor uh, horses on layoffs, and in this, uh, in this case, there are, you know, four of them on layoffs. But what's interesting to me is this race comes off as unpressured. And there is one horse, uh, Arthur's Hope, that projects as, the, um, as potentially having the lead at both calls. Now, it's never been a mile. The longest it's been uh, was its win, like last time, at seven furlongs but it, it could have a significant lead in both calls in an unpressured scenario if i look at my line it's six to one on my line i'll need a good 10 to one to take a shot now this is on off again um i get my price i'll take a shot how will this horse do i don't know if it's able to get the lead and coast it will it will win the race if it doesn't it won't so to sum up in the bluegrass, I think they have the right Colts, win, 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 and Vacoma. Um, I don't think I'd get prices on that. I prefer win, win, win a little bit, uh, but I'm not going to get eight to one, seven, eight to one, which I would need. Um, I would consider some like at Hot Brown. I would need fifteen to one, twenty to one, to bet uh, to bet that Colt. Uh, this is a good race to watch and cheer. Uh, the Aqueduct. Tenth race is a matter of price for me. My top horse is on a layoff, has never been uh, anywhere near the distance, only has two lifetime races, hasn't beat very much. I'd need a big price, 15 to 1, to compensate for all of that. And then I would look at the second and third uh, horse, uh, Colts on the line, Final Jeopardy, which nothing wrong with it. Um, but again, I'll need, you know, 15 to 1 on that. Outshine the reversal, the reverser. Uh, in, uh, in the Tampa Bay Derby to Tacitus. In other words, it finished behind Tacitus in the Tampa Bay Derby. May get uh, under bet because of that. Again, at 15 to 1. And I would have multiple um, multiple win bets if, you know, if I've got two of them. One goes off 20 to 1, one goes off 15 to 1, uh, one goes off 6 to 1. I'll bet the two longer price horses. If only one overlay, which I hope, I'll bet that. Uh, I don't have that same clear line that we had in the Gulfstream uh, race last week, the Florida Derby. And, you know, you can't, you, you can't dictate when value is going to appear or when a clear race is going to appear. These three-year-old races, and they get more difficult <laughs> in the uh, actual Triple Crown races uh, with the uh, element of foreign horses and, and so forth, uh, and the mile and a quarter and mile three sixteenth and then mile and a half distances, which are not really, uh, you know, pace, uh, uh, incremental velocity pace races. So um, that was, last week was a perfect storm. It looked just beautiful. It was clear if the source, these horses run or they don't, but, the, but it's very clear. He, this week um, with the bluegrass, the wood and the Santa Anita Derby, there's a lot of, eh, um, you know, Santa Anita Derby, not much to do. We agree with the public. Uh, similarly, in the uh, bluegrass stakes, well, maybe that uh, some like it hot brown might be a might be a price. And then there, there's this uh, the Wood Memorial, which has some texture, but uh, th there's nothing clear. Uh, okay, um, again, it's, it's binary uh, over deliver ready gets the lead could run well 
doesn't, then it's a pressured race, and then we would look, I'd look to the uh, f five and the ten. But you, you, you're not allowed to see the uh, way the race shapes up until during the race. So betting before, I would just let price be my guide. Well, again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you got something out of understanding how the process of value capping looks at the race differently than just who's going to win. Because a lot of these questions are, are not answerable. The, the, the more profitable question is, is there an intelligent value bet to be made in the race? Even if that intelligent value bet is no bet at all, which happens sometimes. You don't get your price. You don't. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you so much for all the wonderful emails and messages uh, that you sent about the Florida Derby uh, rant. And for those of you who did uh, make some very nice money on that race, and you know who you are, um, congratulations. Good luck this weekend at the races. Remember to bet horses you like that the public shouldn't, preferably running against flawed horses. Remember to wait for your price. Get that felt sense and let the bet make you. I'll see you soon.